Hello friends, this is Durga again from Technology Mentor slash ITVarsity and at this time we are talking about HDFS primarily and uh, so far we have seen uh, the daemons or um, uh, daemon process that are involved in HDFS, name node, data node, etc. Yeah. And then we have seen uh, the several configuration files. We have seen Hadoop PNV.sh, HDFS site, core site and also up to some extent log4j. And then we have seen different ways to validate our cluster uh, without relying on the uh, uh, management tools like Cl uh, Cloudera Manager or Ambari, which will help us uh, in troubleshooting whether it is a uh, Hadoop issue or Ambari issue. So without knowing uh, those back uh, backend uh, commands, you will not be able to determine whether there are any issues with uh, uh, Hadoop or not. And also we have seen where our log files are uh, to troubleshoot the issues. And now uh, we will be talking about uh, uh, the most important uh, part of HDFS, that is files. So all the data will be stored as files in HDFS. And uh, so one of the important concept behind distributed file system is file abstraction. What does file abstraction means? File abstraction means having a file that is larger than any one hard disk in the cluster. So if you take an example of my PC or a Mac, I have a 512 GB storage. So my file can be at max 512 GB, it cannot be more than 512 GB. So uh, by by using uh, um, by using network file system or distributed file systems like HDFS, the, these larger files, we, uh, even if it is greater than the hard disk size, will be uh, uh, will be divided uh, will be divided into multiple blocks, and those blocks will be distributed across multiple hard disks in the cluster, and there will be a software around it which will manage this. So this is not uh, uh, specific to Hadoop or any big data platform alone. Even uh, traditional databases like uh, uh, like Oracle and all also started le leveraging uh, um, uh, file abstraction. ASM is uh, highly uh, um, uh, uh, it's a uh, your, your table space size could be anything. You you need uh, it could be few terabytes also. Uh, because uh, at the ASM layer, uh, which is a network file system, all the uh, uh, all the storage is a logical storage, which is pulled out of multiple hard disks in, uh, um, in that uh, network storage rack. So uh, file abstraction is not new to HDFS, um, um, uh, and it's a very important concept, and uh, you need to understand it. And in most of the cases, in almost all the uh, softwares which can support file abstraction, your file will be divided into multiple blocks um, before storing physically into the hard disks and it is the same even in HDFS uh, uh, in HDFS. So when it comes to HDFS, files irrespective of its size are distributed on HDFS based up on a parameter called DFS blo dot block size. So already I have shown you how to uh, how to see the blocks. Already we have seen how to see the parameters and if you want to see the current value of the parameters you can go to Ambari or you can go to the uh, HDFS site.xml file and uh, search for uh, DFS dot block size and you can see that value is 128 MB. So irrespective of the size of the file it will be divided into 128 chunks and uh, default is 128 MB but uh, you can either increase or decrease. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, those blocks will be distributed across multiple nodes in the cluster depending upon the load uh, uh, in the in the HDFS cluster and uh, uh, this is typically done on data nodes which are slave, uh, slaves uh, in the configuration of HDFS. That being said and uh, uh, then fault tolerance is another aspect of uh, files and blocks HDFS is highly fault tolerant, uh, but uh, typically uh, to, uh, to make your hard disks fault tolerant, uh, uh, you can use RAID. RAID has two concepts called mirroring and striping. And uh, uh, if it is um, mirroring, 
uh, then uh, it will be very expensive. Raid is uh, uh, anyway expensive, but if you are using mirroring, you have to have uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, means. If you are mirroring once, you have to have double the amount of storage, which is quite expensive in, in your network storage racks. And if you want to do one, uh, there are different levels of raid which you can configure uh, to, uh, to, uh, to make your hard disk failure tolerant. But to cut the story short, RAID is primarily to make your hard disk fault tolerant. Even if one of the hard disks failed, your data will be still in intact and you can uh, replace the hard disk when, uh, 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 when your cluster is up and running without any issues. So that's the purpose of RAID. But HDFS does not use RAID. It uses something called DFS replication and it is completely controlled by uh, HDFS alone. And by default, the DFS replication is three. Uh, hence, it will make copy uh, uh, copy. Of, uh, hence, it will make three copies of your, of your data, and uh, will be distributed on. Uh, and you will have those three copies on different nodes in the cluster. So even if one node goes down, not just hard disk failure, but uh, uh, if it goes down for uh, network failure, uh, um, uh, sorry, not network failure, motherboard failure. Uh, memory crash, hard disk failure, or any other component uh, in, in a uh, given server fails, uh, still your server will be up and running without any issues uh, because of this uh, replication factor as you have three copies of the same data set on multiple, uh, on three different nodes. And uh, so if you think about it, it's free and it's far more powerful than RAID. And uh, when it comes to storage, you will be using local storage, which is uh, pretty cheap. So even though you are uh, provisioning 3x uh, uh, storage uh, uh, for your requirements, uh, still it is much much cheaper than uh, having a network storage and having RAID configured against it. That being said, um, uh, replication factor in itself cannot solve ex uh, network failures. For network failures, there is a concept called rack awareness, which we uh, which we'll see later. So you will have multiple racks with multiple switches. And uh, 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 and uh, in, in that configuration, even if a network switch fails or network cable fails, uh, still uh, your cluster will be unaffected. So uh, in HDFS, have uh, uh, HDFS is highly fault tolerant um, um, because it can uh, it can tolerate faults of different kinds of hardware, including network. And now uh, recollecting everything. So files are divided into blocks based upon DFS dot, dot block size, which is 128 MB. And each block will have multiple copies depending upon the replication factor, uh, which is by default three. And hence we will have uh, three copies of each block uh, uh, for, for a given file. We will see as part of demo in a moment and you will understand all these things pretty clearly. And uh, uh, what is file metadata? So name node actually stores the file metadata, whereas data nodes actually stores uh, 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 the data. So now we need to understand what is file metadata. H HDFS files are logical, which means that if you search for a file uh, called deck of cards txt, which we have copied earlier, in HDFS you will not find uh, physically locating in that. It will you will only see by running Hadoop FS minus LS on appropriate path. You will be able to see that uh, file. Otherwise, you will not be able to see anywhere in in any node of the cluster because the files are uh, logical and physically it is stored in a different manner, which we will see later. And each block will have block ID, and this block ID is unique across all the files, and it will have multiple copies because of the replication factor. Each copy will be stored in separate data node. And uh, uh, mapping between this file block and block location is the metadata of the file. And there are other metadata also. This is the most important metadata of a file. It is mapping of the file and each file will have multiple blocks depending upon the size of the file. And uh, each block will have multiple copies of it which will be stored in different nodes in the cluster. So mapping between the file block and block location is, is the main metadata of the file. And on top of that, you have file permissions, directories, etc. So all these will be stored in in memory of name node. So that's what name node's role is to store this metadata and properties of the file 
in the memory so name node is a in memory component and uh, 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 and it it keeps it, uh, uh, it, it keeps all the file metadata in in memory whenever you uh, read a uh, uh, whenever whenever you try to read a file uh, from the client it will go to the uh, name uh, the request will go to the name node uh, which is uh, uh, in memory and uh, then it will determine uh, where your file like this and it will go to the blocks and it will start reading the data from the blocks uh, using the block id because block id is unique and uh, your your files will be uh, named appropriately and depending upon the location uh, um, uh, of your block in the file uh, hence you can actually read uh, in ascending order on block ids okay this is how it will actually store you have the client and uh, uh, you there is a file which uh, uh, let's say it is 256 mb file which requires two blocks so the file is divided into two blocks and it all this is done by uh, 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 sorry client will actually do that but it will get this information from name node so name node will actually uh, assign the uh, assign the block ids and the locations and send the request back to client and then client write uh, 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 client will gen, uh, use those block names for the appropriate block and it will write to the appropriate nodes in this case this file uh, has two blocks block a and block b and name node determined that block a should go to data node 2 and uh, data node 3 and block b should go to data node 1 and data node 3 and that information will be passed back to the client from where hadoop fs minus put command is run and uh, then client will actually write um, uh, block a which is this one uh, onto 2 and 3 so you, here you can see block a here you can see block a and then block b is on data node 1 and 3 so block b is on uh, 1 as well as 3 and then there are other blocks of other files uh, which are c and d so that's how uh, data will be stored okay and uh, we'll come to back awareness in a moment now let us uh, see as uh, as a demo uh, about how this works so for that i am logging into let me close this this is not required for that i am logging into the um, client node in our cluster or gateway node in our cluster which have the public dns okay this is not the valid one so what i have to do is i just have to run this command now i am not doing sh forwarding or tunneling run the command and now you are inside the um, cluster uh, gateway node of the cluster so now cd data and we have already copied this small file which is deck of cars.txt now we are trying to copy a large file which is called large deck.txt and this is 360 uh, 350 mb file so as our block size is 128 mb you will see three um, uh, three blocks two of them will be 128 mb and uh, the last one will th will be the rest of uh, rest of the file uh, when when we actually store in the hdfs and also i would like to show here using uh, uh, fs minus d we will change the replication dfs dot replication to 2 okay and uh, then i will uh, put i will copy the file to hdfs user ec2 minus user so this is how you can actually overwrite the uh, parameters in xml files like hdfs site.xml or core site.xml okay and hit enter and the file is copied and now you can actually run command called hdfs fsck and uh, our uh, file path ec2 minus user and large deck dot txt and then you have to give files which will give just the file name if you give blocks it will give the block block name block ids or block names you can see that there are three blocks uh, one uh, one uh, one is uh, uh, one uh, one ends with 829 other ends with 830 and other ends with 831 and each one have two copies of them and if you want to see the locations you can run 
minus files, minus blocks, and minus locations, and hit enter. And from here, uh, you can see the locations. So uh, our replication factor is two. So you can see that replication factor is two. And this block, which ends with 829, is on two hosts, which is 14 and 16. Similarly, the other block, which ends with 830, is on 16 and 15. So this is the master copy. Uh, uh, whatever IP address you will see, that, that is where it, it will write for the first time and then it will copy to the uh, rest of the nodes in the cluster and it is taken care by uh, that respect to node client will not be worrying about that client will pass on that information to the first node and that first node will actually pass on to the other nodes and then uh, the third uh, one which ends with 831 is on 14 and 16 so this is how uh, your file is stored and this is all the metadata so whatever you are seeing by running HDFS FSEQ on a particular file will give you um, uh, all the metadata of the file and all this most of this information will be stored in name node in memory and when I try to uh, uh, read the data um, by issuing any Hadoop FS commands uh, or programmatically using MapReduce programs uh, the request will go to the name node and only it, it, it knows the uh, mapping between the files and the blocks and it will give you the it will give the client the necessary information and client will take care from there so uh, that being said um, you can log into the other slave nodes if you have ssh forwarding enabled and uh, search on slash hadoop hdfs data with uh, these file names and you will find those files and there is another way to uh, to get this information uh, using web interface So for web interface, I need to have SSH tunneling enabled. So now I am doing SSH tunneling and I'm going to Chrome and now I'm refreshing this. Click on utilities, click on browse the file system and uh, under user, easy to user, you have this file called largedeck.txt replication factory is 2, block size for this file is 128 MB and then if you click on this uh, you will see uh, uh, three blocks which, which is starting with 0, 1 and 2 and the actual block ID is this one which is unique across all the files and this block is stored on 16th and 14th node and uh, the other block is again of size 128 MB like the previous block and it is stored in 15 and 16 and uh, the third block is only 94 MB which is the leftover after 256 MB and it is on 16 and 14. So all this data will be stored in uh, uh, name node in memory and uh, as name node is in memory component you should think what happens if the name node crashes. If something uh, bad happens to the node like a hardware failure or memory crash and as the name node, uh, uh, as this metadata is, is maintained in memory of name node, what will happen to that? That will be answered as part of our next video. Until then, if you have not subscribed to my video, uh, to my channel, please do so. And uh, uh, please like if you like the content of the video or feel free to post a comment or ask me the questions on the respective videos on, uh, on the channel. Thank you. Bye.